Do you want to set up a home music studio but don't know how to get started? Maybe you're running on a tight budget? Technology is changing so fast and it can get very confusing. So I've probed the whole market and compiled all the data so you don't have to. At the end of this video, you'll be able to put together your own studio according to your budget. I'll give you three options for each piece of equipment that you'll need so that you can customize the setup with all the pricing and the best deals that I could find out there. Let's get going. This video will be a one-stop shop for you. Everything that I'll be talking about will be listed in the description with the exact links if you want to purchase the products. I spent a lot of time to compare all the products that are gonna be listed there, and most of them I've already used in the past, so they pass the quality check. If you already have one of those products, you can simply skip to the next chapter. If you have any question about your specific setup, just ask me in the comments below and I'll answer or even post a new video about it. Most successful engineers that I know build their studio by buying mostly secondhand equipment. And the really cool thing with that is that if their needs change over time, they can sell and upgrade and reinvest. That way they lose no value. Sometimes they can even gain value depending on what type of gear they bought. Let's say vintage preamps and things like that. So it's really smart to always first look for secondhand gear before buying brand new things. The very first thing that you'll need at the core of your home studio will be a computer. I assume that most of you guys already have one. If you don't, I'll show you the best options for PC or Mac. I would highly advise that you get a laptop over a desktop, mostly because they're light, portable, and nowadays they're as powerful as desktop computers. PC laptops tend to be a bit cheaper in general than Macs, so let's see the pros and cons for each option here. So the Acer Aspire 5, it's a budget-friendly laptop that's suitable for most tasks. Pros, it's that it's very cheap and the display is pretty big. And the cons, well, obviously at this price point, you can't expect miracles, but I would say that it would still do the job for basic recording and probably basic mixing. Also, this laptop may not be as robust as other higher-end laptops. Our best value option, the Asus VivoBook flagship. It's basically a really great compromise between affordability and performance. It still has a pretty big 14-inch display. Obviously, it has more processing power, so for those who are starting to mix as well, it's gonna be a great asset. Our premium option here for those who really want to step up a notch and have a bit more budget would be the Dell XPS 13. So this is really a premium laptop. It's more top-notch performance, build quality. It's the next best thing to a Mac. For those of you out there who would rather get a Mac laptop for a computer, I would highly recommend that you get refurbished product. The reason why is you're gonna save tons of money and you can already buy older models which are still very powerful. Our first budget option, the MacBook M1 13 inch display 2020 refurbished. So these are the new chips after Apple decided to put their own chips rather than Intel in their machines. It has a small display of 13 inch, so it makes it very, very portable. And it's also still budget friendly if you consider that you're using Apple products, which tend to be pretty expensive in general. If you're buying a cheap Mac like this, obviously you can't expect to have a lot of storage space and usually you have lower RAM. So you may need to buy external devices like solid state drives, hard drives to be able to compensate in the long run. And if you have lower RAM, you're gonna have a hard time running virtual instruments. So you have to also know what kind of machine you're gonna buy according to your needs. But for basic recording, this machine will be absolutely solid. Then our second option best value would be the Apple 2022 MacBook Pro with an M2 chip. 13 inch display at $929. So this again is a refurbished Mac, so you're saving a bunch of money. It's pretty hard to mix on small screens. So I would highly recommend that you get either an external display or you at least have something like a 14 or 15 inch screen. Otherwise it's gonna be pretty hard to see everything in your DAW. This has an M2 chip and again, it's 929. So don't expect miracles in RAM and storage. Our latest option for those of you with higher budget would be the latest Apple MacBook Pro 14.2 inch display with M3 Max processors at $3,000. So these are very, very powerful machines. They may be overkill for beginners. So I would recommend that you stick with cheaper options for now. You can also look into refurbished desktop Macs. For example, I have a 
2019 iMac, which is still running really, really well. So you can save a bunch of money by buying older versions because people are just looking for the latest thing out there. And one very important thing with computers is they tend to lose value pretty quick because the technology is evolving so quickly and people want to just buy the latest thing so they can charge the premium so for example three thousand dollars for a laptop it's a lot of money that you can spend buying basically a whole studio so for those of you who are beginners i would highly recommend to buy let's say m1 refurbished and that way you can spend the rest of your budget to get the microphone, to get the controller. We'll talk about that. The second important thing you'll need is an audio interface. So this can range between a hundred bucks to maybe five, six thousand dollars. So this always depends on your specific needs. If you're only recording one guitar or one vocal at a time, you will not need many analog inputs. So in that case, you can simply buy cheaper options. And as you get fancier and fancier, usually audio interfaces will have more inputs meaning you can record simultaneously multiple sources at the same time let's say for a drum kit so for example in this studio here i have an rme MADI face with an ssl io so i can record 24 inputs at the same time but for beginners if you're just recording acoustic guitar electric guitar or just a vocal microphone you don't need as many inputs so save your money and buy an audio interface with less inputs so our first option the Focusrite Scarlett Solo 4 Gen USB it's an amazing interface for the price the, the preamps are clean you get transparent audio and also it's very compact and for the audio resolution you can go at 24 bits 192 kilohertz so you can go to very high sample rate the cons again is that the fact that you have only one input so it's not suitable for those of you guys who want to record let's say vocals and guitars at the same time and only two outputs for your speakers so you cannot have multiple outputs for example having two different speaker setups the second great value option would be the mark of the unicorn m4 4x4 USB-C audio interface at $269.95. It offers four inputs and four outputs. And you know, it's just double the price as the first one. So it's a really good deal. So again, it really depends what are your needs. And you have a loopback feature for streaming and podcasting, which can be a big plus for those of you out there who are recording podcasts. Our last premium option would be the Apollo Twin X Duo Heritage. So one of the biggest advantages of using Universal Audio Apollo line interfaces is the fact that you have onboard DSP, meaning that you can run a mixer in parallel with your DAW so that you can actually have zero latency monitoring with actual plugins like reverb, delay, compression, and a bunch of things. So it makes your workflow seamless. So this is a huge advantage that the other interfaces that we talked about doesn't have. It also takes a load off of your computer because you can use plugins that are running with the Shark chips that are in your interface instead of using your main computer's CPU. For those of you who are just getting started out there, it may get a bit confusing because there are a lot of features also, if you want to get in the Universal Audio ecosystem, you're going to have to spend quite a lot of money because their plugins are still very expensive. So these are more suited for a professional studio. The third thing that you'll need is a DAW, a digital audio workstation. So now that you have your computer, you have your audio interface to be able to record signals. The DAW is the app in your computer that is able to map all the tracks that are coming in. So you can record, you can edit, and you can also mix in a DAW. Our first option here is Audacity. It's a fully capable audio production editing software, and it's suitable for basic tasks. But the big issue with that is that if you want to program loops, if you want to use samples, if you're using a MIDI controller like this M Audio MIDI controller back here, you can't use that in that software. So that's a big turnoff for those of you guys who want to program beats, who want to program virtual instruments. The other issue is that there are some concerns over privacy and spyware since Audacity was purchased by MuseScore. So that's maybe a turn off for you. The second option is a Reaper. It's a pretty decent DAW. It's only 60 bucks for a personal license. One feature with Reaper is it's scannable so you can change the width looks for those of you guys who like to customize stuff. But the downside is it doesn't come with many plugins that are built in with the DAW. Our two great value DAWs. So first Ableton Live. 
It's very versatile and it's designed for sampling, for loops and for electronic music production. So a lot of DJs out there are using Ableton Live. I myself am not so much into this type of DAW, but I've heard a lot of good stuff and it's very stable. The only cons is that it's maybe less suitable for traditional linear recording. Our second option here is Logic Pro. It's an amazing DAW. I started my early days using that and I would say the Hyper Editor for MIDI programming is very, very good, especially for drums. It has really high quality software instruments and samplers that come built in with Logic Pro as additional downloaded content. I would say price-wise, it's the best deal out there if you compare all the features it has for only 200 bucks, it's really crazy. The only downside with Logic is that if you're not using Mac, you can't use it on a PC. Our third option for premium DAWs, it doesn't mean that Ableton or Logic are not professional DAWs. They all are, and I've seen even people mixing with Reaper, which are at top level. Our premium DAWs here, we have Steinberg Cubase 13 at $580. There are also cheaper versions like Elements and Artist version. So for those of you who are starting out, you do not have to spend all of this money. You can just simply buy the Elements version and as your needs get bigger and bigger and higher, then you can upgrade. Cubase 13 Pro is the software I use here in the studio. It has everything you need. It has so many features. I don't know even 25% of the whole app yet. So I still need to basically discover all the features and they're adding every single year. The licensing system has evolved. So now you do not need a USB dongle anymore, just like iLock. So before you used to have to plug in this USB dongle or the app wouldn't work. So the only downside of Cubase Pro is the pricing. But again, for all the features, it's a really, really good deal. The last choice we have for the premium does would be the industry standard Avid Pro Tools. The only issue I have with Avid Pro Tools is the fact that they're really gearing their stuff towards a subscription model and I have a hard time with that. I like to own stuff and be able to sell it. The problem with subscription is the day you don't want to pay anymore, it's, it disappears, you can't use it anymore. So Pro Tools really needs no introduction. It's one of the most capable and powerful DAWs out there. It has extensive support for third-party plugins. The only issue again is the higher subscription cost, but for those of you who are running on a budget and still want to try that DAW, you can run and pay a cheaper amount of money by paying only monthly bills. The fourth thing you're gonna need in your home studio is headphones. Why? Because they're light, portable, they make absolutely no noise. And these are key components for anyone to get set up in a small room. Also, one very important thing with headphones, they do not require you to do acoustic treatment in your home studio. As you can see around here, there's a bunch of acoustic panels everywhere, but if you're using headphones, you do not need that. So this can be huge savings regarding money, especially if you're working in a very, very small room, headphones are key. Also, wherever you are, your headphones will always sound the same, which is not the case for using monitors. So monitors will always sound different from one room to the other, and you need to get used to that. So for those of you who are traveling, headphones are always a great option. And I always use both headphones and monitors, especially when you want to focus on details. The headphones are very clear and precise for editing. They're amazing. So let's see our three options. So the first one, which needs no introduction, it's a legend, is the Sony NDR7506, only 85 bucks. So it's a very budget-friendly choice that has been a staple in recording studio for so many years. Everybody knows this model. So the pros, it offers an affordable price, accurate, clear audio reproduction, good noise isolation, and it's very portable. The only cons is the plastic construction may not be as durable as higher end models, but at this price point, you can't complain. Some users also find the ear cushions a little bit less comfortable and may complain about the sound that's a little bit honky. Our second great value option is the Audio-Technica ATH-M50X. This is the old version that I've been using for many, many years. It has a close back design, robust build quality and detachable cable system. It has an excellent sound, balanced response, really good low end, it's comfortable. And also, as I just mentioned, you can detach the cable. And last but not least, the mighty Sennheiser 650. So I have a pair here. I would say these are the best sounding headphones that I've tried. Uh, only $318, so this is really 
a steal basically for what it is. So the pros, well, exceptional audio quality. They're super comfortable. You can use them for many, many uh, hours without any issue. The only downside would be the leakage because it's an open back headphone. So it makes a bit of noise. So if you have a newborn, this may not be the best choice right now. The fifth thing you'll need is monitors, studio speakers. So here I have two sets and I would say, is it absolutely mandatory? No, you can still get away with using only headphones, especially if you're only starting. But it's very good to be able to hear sound coming through speakers in a natural environment. Headphones being a closed system don't provide the same spatial awareness as monitors in a room. Also for the creative process, only using headphones is a bit strange. It's always good to have couches and monitors and be able to listen to the music all together. Also one big consideration is ear fatigue. So in general, I would say that monitors cause way less ear fatigue than headphones because they're not as close to your ears. One of the downsides of monitors is that if your room acoustics are really bad, it can create a wrong impression of the actual frequency content of your music. So I had that problem once when I was in Brazil setting up a studio. The room was all concrete with glass. So the low end would be so hard to understand. The decay was so long. So headphones became a huge asset in that specific situation. So our first option for monitors for those on a tight budget would be the Presonus Iris E4.5 BT only $179 for a pair of speakers that is very, very cheap. So it's designed for near field monitoring, meaning it's very close to you. It also features Bluetooth connectivity for convenient audio streaming. Personally, I wouldn't recommend using Bluetooth because there's always some kind of loss of signal. I always like wires, maybe headphones or speakers. So the big pros is that it's very, very cheap. It's very compact and you can use Bluetooth if you need to and for the price, it has a really decent sound quality. The cons is the fact that since the speakers are very small, you have a very limited low frequency response. Other cons is that you may lack detail accuracy compared to higher end models and speakers. Our second great value option, the KRK Rocket 7 G4 for $418. It has a seven inch woofer. So obviously there's gonna be a better bass response than the Presonus one. Very important to know that you shouldn't use massive speakers in small rooms. So you have to adapt the size of your monitor to the size of the room. So the pros of the KRK monitors is that they have a good balance between price and performance. I mean, for this price point and the accuracy of the frequencies response, you can't go wrong. And also you have various input options for connectivity and they're really built like tanks. Our third option for monitors for those of you out there who have a higher budget would be the Neumann KH120 Mark II DSP. So the speakers that I have here is the older version with no DSP. So the DSP version also includes a microphone which you can use to calibrate your speakers according to the frequency response of your room. Using this calibration microphone, the speakers has integrated digital signal processing to compensate the bumps in terms of frequency response to match a more neutral curve. For the size, they have a very good low frequency response, even if the woofer is only five and a quarter inch. It has an outstanding audio accuracy. So for editing, you can hear the reverb tails so well. The sixth item we'll need on the list is a microphone. For those of you who will not be recording acoustic instruments or vocals, you may not necessarily need a microphone. You will instead need a MIDI controller such as this M-Audio Keystation 61. There are two main types of microphones. You can either buy USB microphones, which you can connect to your computer directly, or you can buy XLR analog microphones, which need an audio interface to be able to be recorded. So why buy an XLR microphone that you need to connect to an audio interface and skip that altogether and just use a USB mic? Well, basically there are three reasons. Generally speaking, XLR microphones have better audio quality, more flexibility and more expandability for your studio as it's gonna grow over the years. So if you're only, let's say doing podcasts, a USB microphone may be sufficient, but if you want to start recording more instruments or let's say drums in the future, you will need multiple mics running at the same time. 
So it's very nice to have XLR microphones for these purposes. USB microphones are standalone devices, meaning that to upgrade means to change the whole device. If you're using XLR microphones, you can upgrade the whole chain, meaning not only the mic, but the preamp, and then the analog to digital conversion. So you can work and upgrading your chain progressively to get better results. What type of microphone should you get? Because there are so many choices out there. Not only you have different types like condensers and dynamics, but you have different type of patterns like hypercardioid, cardioid. The only downside with condenser, if you're living in a noisy environment, is the fact that they pick up a lot. They're very sensitive. So that's why you see some people in podcast studios with the SM7B from Shure, which is a dynamic microphone. This microphone rejects noise a little bit better than a condenser microphone. So if you're recording vocals or acoustic instrument, I would say that using a large diaphragm condenser mic would be one of the best options. Our first option, which is the budget one, is the Audio-Technica AT2020. It's only 99 bucks and it has a pretty good audio quality for the price point. The only downside is it has limited features compared to higher end models. Also, it doesn't come with a shock mount, so you may need to buy one. The second option we have is the Sennheiser MK4 at $299.95. So this is a workhorse. You can use it for basically anything and it has improved audio quality and features compared to the AT2020. Our third option for those of you guys who have a higher budget would be the Neumann TLM-103. Of course it's more money, but this is a really great investment for a studio. If you're only getting started, I would say to wait to buy such an expensive microphone because obviously you can use your money more wisely and be able to spread it out on your budget to be able to afford every single thing you're gonna need to start your home studio. The seventh thing that you'll need for your home studio is a MIDI controller. Here I have an M-Audio Keystation 61. So any virtual instrument that you'll be working with in your creation process will require you to be able to play some kind of melody or chords. So these MIDI controllers become really essential in the creation process. These MIDI controllers, they range from 25 keys to 88. So full-size keyboards are 88, but for most of you guys out there, 61 should do the trick. The differences between the cheapest option, the Nectar, and the native instrument one would be integration. So the native instrument keyboard has a seamless integration with contact, which is the leading sampler for all virtual instruments. So the Nectar 41 key MIDI controller is a budget-friendly version. It doesn't have many features, but can still do the job. But at $89.99, I mean, it's a no-brainer. If you want to go with a bit more features, I will really recommend this M Audio Keystation 61 MK3 for 200 bucks. You also have a DAW integration with the play, stop, and record function. So it helps a little bit your workflow. Premium option would be the Native Instrument S Series Complete Control S61 MK3. This MIDI controller has an amazing integration with Contact, which is the leading sampler for virtual instruments that I use all the time. The eighth thing that you'll need are cables. So basically anything to connect your microphone or MIDI controller to your interface and computer. We'll take the example if you're buying this condenser XLR microphone to connect to your audio interface, you will need an XLR female to TRS male cable. What are the differences between cheaper cables and very expensive cable? Well, you can go from a cable that's $15 to a cable that's $300, like evidence audio cables. If you have more expensive cable, obviously the signal transmission is gonna be slightly better the durability is going to be better. But if you're only getting started in your studio, I wouldn't recommend spending a lot on cables. For a cheaper cable version, which is still good, is the Hosa Pro REAN XLR to TRS cable, which is about $19. Our second option for best value would be the Digiflex Performance Series featuring Nutric connectors. So these are very, very sturdy and they will never break. And for those of you guys who are more fancy, you can get the Mogami Gold Studio XLR cable. But again, these are gold-plated cables. Obviously, they have a better signal transmission. But this is not a place where you should spend if you're starting a home studio. The ninth thing that you'll need if you want to set up a home studio is not mandatory, but it's highly recommended, is acoustic treatment. And I've spent a good amount of time 
treating this room, adjusting. So it takes a lot of time to be able to build a decent setup without having to call an acoustician and try to figure out how your room responds to the acoustic treatment. So this is really a trial and error type of thing. If you're using only headphones, you won't need any acoustic treatment. By the way, I spent a good amount of time working on acoustic treatment in a studio in Brazil. You can see the whole process right there. If you don't want to spend a lot on acoustic treatment, my advice would be to buy rock wool and make structures by yourself with the rock wool inside. Obviously, you're gonna need to spend some time. If you don't want to spend any time, you can simply check one of these three options. So the first option would be some kind of foam wedge panels from Aurelex. The second option, which is still pretty expensive, would be Prime Acoustic London 8 Room Kit. So these are not very thick panels, so they won't absorb a lot of low end. So again, the best thing you should do is always start with building base trap or purchasing base traps, but these are also the most expensive. Base trap should be placed in the corners of your room where there's a buildup of a low end frequency, which is usually the most problematic thing. Our premium option would be the Prime Acoustic London 10 room kit, which has more panels and the panels are thicker. So there are more broadband absorption around $750. But you also need to buy additional base traps to control the low end of your room. The 10th thing that you'll need is regarding any extras, meaning a pop filter for your condenser microphone, perhaps a studio desk if you want to have a comfortable setup. It could also be a microphone stand for your large diaphragm condenser microphone. So regarding extras, you'll also need some virtual instruments if you want to compose, like for example, Easy Drummer or Seven Slate Drums or Scarby bass from Native Instruments. So any type of instrument that you plan on using in your sessions. So these are the 10 things that you'll need to set up your home studio. I hope that the content was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Please like, subscribe and share with your friends and hit that notification bell. See you again very soon.